Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Africus Weekly. Um, today we're here with the incredible artist Joseph Smolin. Um, Joseph, thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So you know, give him a brief introduction. You know, Joseph lives in Greenville, um, South Carolina. He's a painter and multimedia artist. Um, he also runs, co-founded a art magazine called The Rattlesnake, um, and he also builds a community, an art community, as a curator. Um, so, Joseph, just to start off, can you kind of tell us a little bit about your journey into art and kind of how you got started in this field? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been quite a journey, to be honest. So, I mean, I've been drawing since I was a kid, really. Sorry, one second. This is just really echoing on my side. I think that'll be better. Can you still hear me? Yeah, no, you're good. Okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, I mean, I've been drawing since I was a kid. Um, it was always just an outlet for me early on. And then I was actually, I was an industrial design student in college, so I did not go into, like, an art field, although there's, like, some overlap. Um, and then I kind of got into, like, the, like, kind of do-it-yourself art world when I moved to South Carolina. I moved here right after I graduated college. And, you know, I just, I didn't really know anyone in South Carolina. And so it was kind of a way for me to like build community and also just kind of dedicate time to this thing that again, I'd kind of been doing my whole life. So it's always been like very personal to me, you know, art, like the art I make and just, it's been cool putting it out into the world more, I guess. It's been super different, um, but, Essentially, like me and um, my wife, Leah, and a few other friends, we started an art magazine. We started working on it during COVID, and we kind of launched it in 2021, and it's called Rattlesnake. So we accept um, submissions from artists like in the South, basically. We do focus on the Carolinas in particular, because based in Greenville, South Carolina, um, but if anyone is like interested in submitting, it's like rattlesnake.press, um, and that's on Instagram. That's our website. So just throwing that out there. But in terms of like my own personal art practice, it's changed so much. I mean, I always drew as a kid. I got really into painting really when I moved to South Carolina in 2018. And, you know, it was funny, like my friend who was in this like kind of folk punk band they wanted me to like live paint with them and at that point I like hadn't painted in like five years or something so that really got me back into it and I just always enjoy experimenting and like so like a lot of my recent work has been more mixed media I've used like industrial foam and stuff like that for texture so you know for me it's just about like, I try to let the emotions of the work, I guess, lead the way. Uh, I know that can sound a little corny, but, like, I try not to think too much about process. Like, I feel like if I know that the piece is coming from the place I want it to, like, conceptually and emotionally, that I can figure it out, you know, over time, how I want it to look. Um, and, yeah, hopefully that's, like, a good overview. I mean, I guess for context for people who are, like, completely unfamiliar with my work. I do mostly acrylic, but also a lot of like mixed media painting. I've done a few like exhibitions that also had like a uh, found object sculpture and also like larger scale sculpture. Like my last exhibition was with an artist also based out of here called a uh, Griffin Cordell. And it was called No Sleep Theme Park. And it was kind of like these really big, really gnarly sculptures that were almost kind of like sleep paralysis nightmare stuff. Um, and it was sort of like this exhibition where like you could sit in this bed and you could kind of watch this big monster looming over you. And there were like various things to interact with. Um, so I've really kind of dabbled, I guess all that to say in like a fair amount of mediums, but my core is kind of always been drawing and painting. Do you find that your themes change just as much as your styles, or do you find that your themes are pretty consistent as well? 
It's a good question. I would actually say I think my themes are pretty consistent. Yeah. I actually sometimes I worry that they're too consistent. I feel yeah. like be, I play around a lot with style and with like medium, but I've always I feel like I mean I don't mind talking about my themes, but I feel like they've been pretty consistent for a while now. Yeah. Um, That's cool. And yeah. when you go into a piece, do you the imagery that you're creating? Do you feel like it's intentional or do you find that it almost just comes about when you're just like organically creating? Um, a lot of it is organic. Like I definitely try to tap into a sort of unconscious or sort of, um, I don't know, like for so long I was just doodling like way sure. before I was ever doing art and putting it out into the world. So like a lot of my ideas, even of like my really big pieces, like they start off as just like, me drawing the same character over and over again and like a lot of that stuff comes from this idea that if you can just do the thing like if you can do the act of drawing and you can draw stuff then you can build that into art so like a lot of the times i feel like i almost find out the meaning when everyone else does does that make yeah. sense sure yeah it's almost like you're just as um the first to find out when the audience finds out <laughs> for sure for sure or like i'll look back at a piece from years later yeah and when i look back at it it'll i'll be like oh right like that's what i was going for and like here's what i was trying to say or like whatever like here's this feeling that i was having but when i'm making art i feel like i'm almost like finding my way through the dark you know like i just mm -hmm. try to be really open with the process like and that's like means working in layers and like being able to come back to something and um like just kind of keep going until it's something that i feel happy with but it also just means like sometimes being like you know what like this isn't the way that this should be at all and just like yeah. you know keeping working on it do you yeah. think that i mean you've talked a lot about community from being a part of it when you came to south carolina and meeting people in the art world um and then rattlesnake the magazine um how has community in the art world um played a role in transitioning or changing how you engage with art in your work or not at all that's a really good question um i almost feel very torn because most of the work that i make like I make alone and I don't necessarily I like my work to be able to be received by a lot of different kinds of people um so there's an element to it I would say that's very almost anti-social for me but with that being said I feel like a lot of the success but more than success just like i've learned so much from the art community here and it was something that i don't know in a lot of ways was i don't know it just really pushed me forward being around other creative people like i never felt like i had that in my life you know like i always felt like um especially since i like i wasn't an art major and it wasn't always like the main focus of my life i never felt like i really had a creative community and so finding one here was just really valuable and i think that like just having that being in that situation where you can catch up with someone and you can know what they're working on you know whether that's visual art or music and then they ask you what you're working on like there's just a lot about that that keeps me going and keeps me inspired because i do think that a lot of artists can be um you know, it can be kind of a lonely undertaking and it can sure. feel like you're out in space. So I think it really helps just having those connection points and having people that you respect, like artistically and personally. Like uh, a friend of mine was saying something recently about like how a lot of success comes from actually creating space for others. And I thought that really fit into my own experience because like, like when we founded this magazine, like, you know, like we weren't, um, you know, we weren't like anybody really, you know what I'm saying? Like, like even in the local scene at that point, like I'd had like a couple of shows in breweries and that was great, but like 
I really felt like putting in the work to like elevate other artists that I thought were awesome did so much more for like my career, but also how I thought about art, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was really the thing that kind of pushed me to the next level. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I think that what you're saying applies to so much across life. Um, For sure. It's cool to see how that, yeah, that action took place in your life, which Mm -hmm. is awesome. You can tell, I mean, like looking through your magazine, I mean, this is, um not just unique with what's in it but super diverse in terms of the type of work that's being showcased the quality of it i mean it's just it's really cool um, you want to hold it up you can tell a lot of effort and uh different creative minds went into this you want to hold it up there yeah yeah i like that issue yeah i appreciate you guys like taking the time to look through it because like and kind of just to what you were speaking to like we always had this goal of like we didn't necessarily have one type of art that we wanted to push off it was almost more just like we wanted to find people that we thought were really talented who we felt like weren't getting much exposure and so a lot of artists we worked with were like young they were up and coming they're people who never really had the opportunity i guess um even that like I had had. And so it it just kind of built a nice network of like artists who were, I don't know, just working to improve, but were very much like open and just excited, I guess. Definitely. I think that that's something that we kind of get lost in with today's like social media and big time, like magazines and stuff is just kind of also engaging with, um some of the most quality work that is less seen and unknown for sure i mean i think there's like a big problem with like the way that social media you know it kind of presents this like lie that like i don't know it feels like um all that matters is the results you know what i'm saying like you don't feel it see everything that went into it like all you see is kind of like results and also like so many of like the biggest art accounts and stuff to me like so much of what is actually making them big uh is just like great lighting like a super professional photo studio and like listen i think that stuff is like great and like i've had to learn all that stuff but i do think that sometimes with the internet people kind of learn backwards where first they learn all of the marketing they learn how to make your stuff look professional. And it's like, if you don't necessarily have the work that you want to be making, or if you're not, if you haven't put in the time to kind of find your own style, I don't know, it can just seem, I don't know, kind of hollow in this way, I guess, um, if that makes sense. Definitely. It, it, It almost loses the true intention of what it's trying to promote for the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah. And I worry about, too, because, like, I don't know. I'm not, like, a total tech doomer. Don't get me wrong. I'm, like, on Instagram a lot. But it's, like, I do think that there's something to, like, you know, these practices, even beyond art, where, you know, you have to put in kind of a lot of time. And, like, for the – a lot of the time you're putting in early on, you're not seeing anything back from. I mean, that's something that, like, I feel like – a lot of visual artists almost sometimes it feels like they're i don't know not telling the whole story where it's like you know it's tough in the art world in general and like you know the first what you know 10 years that i was doing art or something like that it's like you're not seeing any real benefit from it you know what i'm saying like i think that it's important to have that time to just make it for the sake of it and not make it for the sake of like seeing some kind of benefit i guess yeah in your life because it's not the most efficient way to just like i don't know make a ton of money or you know really get ahead in life you know it's you have to have a lot of passion to get through a lot of like grueling aspects about it (laughs) absolutely yeah it's like 
you know, creating just for the sake of creating or just for the sake of curiosity, that's kind of where you see the people who are the best at their craft. They're not doing it for the results. They're doing it because they're truly curious or, you know, passionate about whatever product they're putting out there. Um, I think that's a great way to, great way to think about it. Um, I think so cool too, how, you know, you saw something that was so beneficial to yourself and, you know, finding this community and then taking the first steps to create that for other people and put this magazine out there. Um, what kind of gave you the courage to take the first step to start the magazine? Gosh, that's a good question. I mean, definitely like Leo is a big part of it. I mean, you know, we hadn't, we'd been together, I guess a year or two and we started working on it. And I don't know, it was always this thing that like, not just me and Leah, but like a few other friends too, we would like kind of talk about doing it. And I feel like it was just kind of the perfect storm moment where it was like, on the one hand, like it was COVID and like, you know, I was fortunate enough that I was like working from home, um, but Leah was like a bartender. So like, you know, obviously that wasn't happening. And it was like, you know, it just kind of felt like this is the moment, like we have the time, you know what I mean? And that is a rare thing in life. So we had the time. And so a lot of just like figuring out, the, like kind of what I was saying, like just like figuring out the all the boring aspects of putting together a magazine. Because we spent a long time in COVID just working on our first issue and like we weren't going to put it out until after, but it was just like, I don't know, really learning that process. And that was exciting. And I just felt like I wasn't going to be able to, it felt like I'd hit a lot of walls, I guess, in my own art. And I felt like, I don't know, it just felt like I wasn't going to be able to reach that next level unless we really did something that was kind of, I don't know, almost a little crazy. I mean, you know, we put that first issue, you know, we printed it completely with our own money. And it was like, yeah, I don't know. It, I, I think that like a lot of times what I've experienced, like what really, it, this might be like terrible life advice, but like what really pushes you is just like being in that situation where it's like, you know what, I'm doing this and like, it's not really like I, like there is a risk involved and you might not really see any return kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's how I felt even, you know, like I've been doing art four times a year and it's it's definitely like there are a lot of challenging aspects to it. But there's a part of me that's just like, if you care about something, you just have to kind of show up for it in this way, you know, and that's kind of how I think about it more than anything else. Like, yeah. I think that's great life advice. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, um. I'm actually curious, like, to ask you guys how you started out. I don't know if it's okay if I ask a question. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, please. Yeah, um, well, I I started Apricus after I graduated from CU, and Jake joined me shortly after. Um, I had worked for some art galleries as an intern, and noticed how inefficiently they were running their businesses. And um, I built some relationships with some artists and kind of started to understand how they felt about the industry and how it lacked in terms of both the in-person experience in the galleries, but also in the online space um, where a lot of artists pay to try to have their work sold and seen, but um, it's ineffective. Um, and that's kind of how Apricus came along. So I could um, try to create a platform where it's for the artist, does right by the artist, and tells the story of the artist just as much as it's trying to sell the work um, in a way that um, doesn't cost the artist anything. Um, and I didn't think a relationship would make sense with artists unless um, we're helping them make money. That's when we should make money um, rather than the opposite. So that's evolved from us trying to begin as more of a, a marketing uh, place to actually becoming um the actual the marketplace for it um mm -hmm. and we've met a lot of cool people and heard a lot of really cool stories and i know for speaking to myself it's made my life a lot more fulfilling getting to talk to people like you all the time so that's yeah. awesome to hear yeah definitely are you an artist yourself i'm not i um 
I I'm not super talented like that, but um, I've I've just always been drawn to art in a sense where I feel like I can connect with the people who create it and also um, the emotions behind um, a piece that really kind of evoke a lot of different feelings. And I noticed that first when I started going to museums and looking at paintings and um, noticing that I could actually spend a lot of time engaging with this work. And then um, that transition to working for an art gallery where um, there's kind of no looking back after that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, it really stood out to me, like just the way that you do your stuff in general, because kind of like you mentioned, there's a lot of like, I mean, there's just like a lot of like exploitation around the R word in the sense of like, you know, kind of like you said, like paying to be seen, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's yeah. something we've, we've tried to think about with the magazine as well. Cause like our submissions are free for instance. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, so we survive off of like grants and donations and like event tickets. But like part of the thinking of that is just like, like for me, it's like, we want to be making, we don't want to be making our income from like the artists directly. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because Absolutely. like, we don't want our main source of income to be artists that want to be seen. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we want to be able to, give the art the artists an easier time and like you know get the money from like other avenues so i definitely respect um like that aspect of what you guys are doing and also like just having a relationship in general like i think that's i've found kind of can be almost a rare thing when you start to get to a certain level of art yeah. institutions and that's one reason i'm grateful to like i don't know have kind of come up in like a pretty like like DIY like art scene where it was yeah. like very much the opposite mentality. I think that has kept me like grounded for sure. Definitely. I, I think that in this day and age, there's no better time to be for both what you're doing with rattlesnake and what we're trying to do. There's really no excuse for with how much technology um, and how much resources we have to information and connections where we should not be trying to actually benefit the artist um, instead of making them uh, the customer, you know? So a lot of these business models, even from the traditional art gallery, taking 50% of what um, the sale price is, or now it's paying a fee to be online or featured um, or even in a magazine. I mean, like it's very rare, even in some of the bigger publications, um, as I'm sure you know, that you have to pay. Like we've tried sure. to be in magazines and you have to pay a ton. Um, so, I mean, I think it's just, it's a shame that um, that's the way it's set up. But I think that as long as people have the right intentions to try to help kind of flip the table, I think it's totally possible nowadays. For sure. I mean, a lot of like industries are changing and I actually think part of like why the art industry can be in a bad place is actually because like people aren't, aren't really ready to change you know what i'm yeah. saying so like it almost is like a, it gets worse before it gets better type thing totally. um but yeah like to your point like that's always been my frustration which i've tried to be vocal about because like even for me now like there's certain things that like i can do like like i can pay a submission fee or stuff that like at certain points like you know i just wasn't able to do and so when you create these barriers like you, like you may not realize it but you are cutting off like like very talented very interesting artists that just might not be at a place where like they can front the money or they can do this or they like it gets very pay to play so that's like yeah anyone who's pushing against that um yeah i have a lot of respect for it. and yeah thanks and to you too so <laughs> i um i totally agree i think it's really um it's like what you were saying it gets worse before it gets better um, I think we're the art industry is very similar to the music industry, um, where there hasn't been a lot of change, but we've obviously seen a lot happen in the past five, ten years with the music industry, and a lot more that needs to happen. Um, and I'm hoping that sure. we're kind of on the the same trajectory in this industry as well. For sure, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 
Um, yeah, do you have any other questions about anything in particular, I guess? That's it kind of for me. Um, Jake, you anything else you want to add in? Um, yeah, why don't we pull up uh, some of your work and we can maybe talk about a couple pieces. And then oh, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, My audio is sounding okay, right? Yeah, I yeah, can hear you fine. Okay, great. I'm getting like a slight echo, but I think it's just the headset. But it's not. Cool. It's not too bad. Let me know if there's a particular piece you want um, want me to pull up. Um. Well, that whole like top column I can talk about actually because cool. uh, that was something. So that was like my first like gallery show that I did, and this was um I sort of been beginning of 2022, and so. Um, this show for me, like for my pieces was built around this concept of like these three characters that all kind of represent, I don't know, like you can take it different ways. I think you can read it politically, you can read it more religiously, but essentially like going from the left to the right, it was like the prophet and then it was the revolutionary and then it was the cowboy. And so... Uh, with this show, it's called Invisible Planet, and I worked on it with my friend um, Virginia Rousseau, actually. Um, but these are all, of course, my pieces. But she had some pieces in that show, and we kind of worked on the concept together. But with this show, it was a lot of, I guess, um, as non-judgmentally as I could, kind of thinking about like different ways of seeing the world, I guess, and like different, almost like. Uh, making caricatures out of them so like uh you know i feel like the cowboy was very much this like pretty almost like cartoonishly sort of masculine very like domineering presence and then i feel like the prophet was trying to draw upon like just just sort of like mystical and like religious imagery and then with the revolutionary like definitely pushing more towards like um like leftist stuff and like also kind of almost like the uh like the opposite of like the um of the cowboy so that was just like an interesting show yeah. um and it was like i don't know with a lot of my work i feel like it, it's almost like the sense of humor is what brings it together where like there's they're like super deep themes that I could talk about, but like a lot of it is almost like slapstick thinking, if that makes any sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's just like something I thought would be interesting to speak to. But if you have like any other pieces, I'd love to talk about them as well. I love that piece on the left. Here you go real quick. This? No, one above it. Oh, yeah, that's actually one of my favorites. Yeah, this one's yeah. awesome. This is actually from that same show. So as you can see, it's like it was playing off of that cowboy character a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this one, I, I was I was actually really proud. So it's like the um, those sort of zebra horse things. Those are like cut paper, and it's like kind of hand-done ink. And um, I was pretty inspired by like... Uh, Takashi Murakami with like some of this I was thinking of although it's it's quite different but I was thinking about I don't know if you know his work but he's like a Japanese artist that yeah. I was like influenced by um but yeah That's I don't awesome. know I, I I wanted it to be this sort of like feeding of the horses sort of a vibe but just and like it, very... the top is it kind of a um, like a broken hot air balloon but yeah, it's almost, yeah, yeah. it has a face. There's a lot of there's a personification of it, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like this hot air balloon, um, and it's also sort of playing on this face of like the cowboy, and then it's sort of like broken or it's sort of leaking this fluid that then the animals are eating. So um I don't know. I mean, this one was like so you know, some of my pieces I almost don't know what to say about them, and this is almost one of them, but I just felt like it was a super vivid idea with this hot air balloon and it's and these like feeding animals. Um yeah. I love it. Yeah, I like this a lot. Um you know, I was reading something you said where you try to make your paintings um 
a distortion of reality or maybe that's just kind of how it comes about um, for sure yeah i think a lot of it is like trying to come from this place of like like distorting the familiar um and i think that like a lot of the archetypes that are drawn i want there to be like some familiarity with them but then kind of distorting their meaning or like the way that you're used to seeing them um because like i feel like you know everyone brings their own perspective to the table of how they see things and i feel like with a lot of my work i'm trying to almost highlight that aspect of life of like how easily perception can change i guess of something and how i feel like a lot of my characters like live somewhere in between being heroes and villains i guess you could say where like they're kind of threatening but maybe there's something sympathetic about them yeah like a good-hearted villain yeah yeah you know i feel like often in movies the villain has like a more complex like story than the hero Definitely. at least in like a yeah, lot of movies like, sure um uh, we talk about that all the time how the yeah. villain is much more relatable than the hero and they had <laughs> the same path but you know one one obviously maybe took it a little bit too far but i'm glad that hollywood's kind of going the route of um making a lot of the villains the main character of these movies it makes them a lot deeper well, they often have a more like interesting philosophy, you know, where mm -hmm. I feel like the classic hero archetype is this sort of like, I don't know, there's sort of like Luke Skywalker-esque, like, like no shade of stars, just like Luke Skywalker-esque figure where like, he's a, he's a nice dude, like, you couldn't really say much about what he thinks about the world, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But... Yeah. Well, yeah, he's like, it's a sense of duty for the hero where the villain in their own way is actually trying to change the world, you know, even though yeah about it is probably wrong but um, i wonder if like as an artist i there's something about like i don't know like almost relating to like the uh, even if it's like very misguided like the sort of like ambition of a lot of movie villains where it's like you know i feel like a lot of them they have like soup like they come from nothing like super humble beginnings and they're trying to just like absolutely change the entire world and like everything and the most into the most basic like you know things and it's like damn you know like maybe they got lost along the way but i feel like there's some interesting ideas in there you know definitely yeah, i love that i couldn't agree more um yeah you once you truly understand the arc of the villain maybe put yourself in their shoes um a lot of times it's easy to see where they're coming from for sure and i think that like for me i mean maybe this is getting too dark but i feel like a lot of villains are like coded as like you know having like trauma basically and they're coded as like having gone through a lot and like for me that was like way easier to relate to a lot of the times than just like this dude who's just like seems super happy like always was pretty happy just like he's trying to do his duty or something you know uh yeah no, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Um, well, this has been great, Joseph. Thank you so much for your time. Um, really, yeah, of course. Thank you. Kind of, you know, share more of your story with, uh, with you know, our community and uh, you know, the the art community really is lucky to have someone like yourself that's not just putting great work out there, but also helping artists, you know, like yourself, uh, kind of promote themselves and find their own community. I really appreciate you saying that, and I really appreciate what. Um, both of you are doing and what like Apricus is doing in general um, it's really cool to be a part of it and I had a great time today just hanging out and talking so yeah, yeah this thank was fun you. we're uh, really happy to have you a part of our family I mean it's it's a pleasure to work with people like you um, it's the best part of our day these types of conversations so thank you yeah thank you of course um, thanks for having me guys fun.